We all want copies of. And there's the dolls she made. I think you have all of the pictures that I have. There's Hallie. She can't hear, so we can talk about her. You mean they didn't eat them after you had them? Be quiet, though. Hallie. Okay, these are pictures and memories of the Clay Rushton family. This picture is of Clay and Merritt. Fred and Grandma Mabel. Fred Rushton. The top two small groups is uh, Richard and Latisse Johnson Rushton and Ed, Edwin and Sarah Robinson. Robinson. The home is of whose? Whose this home? the Mattinson home of Betsy and Robert Mattinson. Okay, the picture on the bottom is Betsy and Robert Mattinson. And this is Annie Francis and Fred Rush. All right, you're recording. Tell your story. Well, we lived in we lived in Las Vegas until, until I was two, and then Grandpa Rexton uh, told Dad that it was really green pastures in Delta, and so we went there on the uh, to homestead a home there, and uh, and all that we had was the hard pad, and my mother made some uh, bonnets. And we went and lost them because we didn't like to wear them. Then there was the time when when we were to go. When we went to get on the train, uh, a person sat up and she said, that has to be Clay Rushton. Nobody else sounds like Clay Rushton. And it was Aunt Ruth. She was going home to, to, to be with her folks, too. Then there was the time when we went and moved to Eureka, Utah, and Hallie had the chicken pox, and she had them in her eyes and in her nose and, and everywhere. She never missed one thing about having the chicken pox, and so we all got them from her. You're in that, Hallie. <laughs> the thing that I, I remember is the youngest thing, uh, when I was the youngest, was after we had moved to Montana, I was just a little over three years old, and I got pneumonia. I think it was right after my third birthday. And Dad and Mother took me to the hospital in Great Falls, and I don't remember much of anything about it except that I had. Mother was so concerned with my long legged underwear having so many patches on them and that telling her that that wasn't the important thing, that the important thing was to make it get better. And then <clears throat> the next thing I recall is when we went to Carson to be sealed to dad and mother. <clears throat> and uh, I don't remember the ceiling, the temple, or things like that, but in front of the Carson Temple is a, a pond, a pool, or, and uh, around the edge it was, wasn't very wide, and Bobby was trying to see if he could make it around. And uh, we were all dressed in our white clothes, ready to go into the be sealed to mother and dad and he fell in and had to be changed and didn't mother say hmm? and mother said she didn't know who he was somebody said yeah he did she didn't know oh that's not my little boy she said 
And he started to cry, and said, I bet you are my mom. Well, put that aside. Oh, yeah, that ought to be out here. I you don't do it for a minute. <laughs> Son, go. Oh, well, all my memories are, were good of Montana, as far as I can remember. I remember when uh, <clears throat> Dad built the three-holer toilet. I mean, and that was a real neat one, and it also had a open the back and take it out, and I never did figure that one out. And then I remember when we got a bathroom, and I remember that that was the only spanking that I re really think I remember. I know I had to have had a million of them because I was probably a brat, but I remember that one because I'd gotten in our bathroom and I'd locked the door. Mother kept saying, now Dawn, I ask you to do this, I ask you to do this, and I said, shut up. Well, when I came out, Dad was there, and I got a real good one. <laughs> And then I remember how I felt so bad when we moved to Montana or to Idaho that we were gonna have to sell the piano. And Dad promised me we would get one when we got to Idaho. Old model T Ford and it had four brakes. The black brake, the clutch, the a back and the forward. And it rode real the four brakes. Well when we had it had it on a I had two wheel trailer behind and when we went to we had to go through Yellowstone Park because we were never coming back through. We'd never get a chance to see Yellowstone Park. So we had to go through and it was in October. Well you know how much snow in, there is in in Monta er, in the park in October. And we went to go up this hill and we couldn't get up and it, it was gravity feed and so Dad unhooked the trailer back the car up the hill and then we push the trailer up the hill yeah. Don't get me. go ahead pull the trailer up the hill and uh, and then we had to fill the trailer up and hook it back on the car and every time we would go a little farther we'd say how much farther and you'd always say five more miles just five more miles Dad. But when I was this little girl, I used to get so scared. We'd go to church and we'd sing, uh, Israel, Israel, God is Calling, or some, some army, war song of some kind. And I would be so afraid that there'd be a war. And I couldn't sleep, and I'd just lay there and tremble, and pretty soon, France would go sleep with Mother, and Dad would come and get in bed with me, and pat me a little bit, and pretty soon I could go to sleep. And so that's probably, that was probably, oh, 15, 8, maybe, something like that. One thing I can remember, too, is uh, just thinking about that, is what I remember, uh, Dad would always go to bed, it seemed like, fairly early. He was, you know, worked so hard, and he always wore long-legged underwear. <laughs> and I loved to get in bed with him because it was absolutely so cozy and then mother would move me into the cold bed. <laughs> when you <laughs> like got to bed and push her over and sleep in her warm spot. Another thing is the first reunion. Dad had just barely built that new barn. We thought it was a wonderful barn. Never ever used it. So everybody just kind of threw out their sleeping bags and cots and that was first reunion that I remember. I didn't get to go to that. That was the I year that Jim was, no, Larry was born. Yeah. Jim was born. Well, we came up, but it was, uh, everybody had left by the time we got there. We couldn't get there. I early. think our first reunion was when Grandpa and, and Grandma Mae moved to Montana. Yeah, I think we had a reunion every day of our life. <laughs> that was the, as I look back on, on happy times that was probably one of the happiest when they lived to me in the big house and uh, we got along good I think that's the only thinking I ever remember getting from dad <laughs> is that I told him one day that grandpa had uh, hit me with his king <laughs> and brother dad didn't just take my word for it he just took me by the hand and went in and <laughs> gave grandpa you know, we got the third, we got the four questions, 
Well, I ended up getting the sink, and then Grandpa got the halo. <laughs> And then the net, and, and the other thing that I remember so much about that is that I used to love to go in just before their meals because there were always 12 chairs turned. Howard to tell you that there was only 11 because he had to stand had out. out. <laughs> but was to see these 12 chairs prepared for prayer, and I know that it was Grandma Mabel that kept family together. And she was really the only grandma that we ever knew. Yeah. Yeah. We used to fight over the uh, Deseret News because there was continued story in there. So Laverne and I and some of the others would just make a wild dash for the Deseret News to read our story. And it got to be such a hassle and Aunt Mabel wouldn't let anybody read it. And so we'd go in the big front room and gather around the <laughs> <laughs> the old stone there, a fireplace, whatever it was, and she'd read it out loud to us, which made it real special, but I know we used to have Val Royal, and Steve was going to get to read the continued story first. And then the, Fred always got to go to the show first because he could come home and tell the story best. <laughs> uh, <assume Well>, <laughs> we better get back to Dad. <laughs> but anyhow, at the, I remember when we were at the, when I was about 11 or 12, I got a really bad beating because I let Don <laughs> fell uh, or fall in the car and just bloodied her nose. And oh, I really got beat up on because I got it. Have. <laughs> the only beating I can remember is getting is I was on a horse and I was to go through the the gate to get into where the cows were to take them down to the field. And I said, Dad, that gate is not open wide enough. And so when I went through the gate, it tore my shoe, and I said, See, I told you it wasn't open for him. <laughs> Boy, he took me off that horse, and he <laughs> let me understand I didn't talk like that to him. <laughs> That's the only licking I ever remember getting from. Well, I remember I one day uh, when we were eating dinner, and I had made the salad. And all of a sudden, he started to heave, and he heaved. Oh, and my horse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he had got me with well, that. He, he had got a <laughs> uh, uh, cotton, cotton ball. ball in his throat. Oh, oh, oh. And cotton I, ball. Well, yes, yeah, from the tree. From the oh, oh, I, I had got it all out, out of the la- out of the salad. <laughs> oh, oh no! <laughs> well, see, mother had lettuce in the garden, yeah. and so Francis had moist it thoroughly. <laughs> oh, I was in trouble for oh. sure. But Dad always, um, when when he did chastise. He always had come up. I remember when they lived in the, the last house we lived in in Montana. I don't remember. It couldn't have been anything very serious because I was an you know, older teenager. But anyway, he came up and told me. always called me Mamie, and I'm not sure I always liked that name. It was I better than the one he called me. <laughs> but anyway, he called me Mamie, and I'd say, Mamie, I love you, even if I get scolded. It probably could have been because they stayed out too late or something, you know. I guess my the most gratitude I have is that dad and mother were always so willing for us to have our friends come to the house. Uh, the day of, we had just the day before the uh, bombing of Pearl Pearl Harbor, <coughs> we had just gotten home from the Thanksgiving trip to Grandpa and Grandma Chadburn's, and the next morning I said. I want to have Catherine come over and Leon said, I, or Francis said, I want to have Leon and Betty. And anyway, Mother, after we'd been on this trip, she said, we'll just have the whole Lee family come. And that's kind of the way it was all week. We had someone. And then for the times that Dad sat so patiently up at Fort Shaw and waited for us to dance, get through dancing without ever, ever saying, I don't ever remember Dad saying, can't we go home a little early? And it was, the dance wasn't out until 2 o'clock in the morning, and that's when we went home. That's when Dad went. Always North the music, you always yeah, he could. He could. <laughs> <Not> the music. <clears throat> well, I just, I remember, um, too, that when the piano was such a big thing, because I, I mentioned that, when we had this moved to Montana. I was going to down here. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, 
in Stockton. When we went down oh, a couple of years, three years ago, it was just before Uncle Rube Whipple died, and they got started talking about going prospecting with Mother and Dad. One day they were out in the old Model T Ford, I'm sure that's what it was, and they got lost out there and were late getting home, and so and they were just starved. But Dad said, well, I've got some coffee here. We'll just brew us up some coffee. So they stopped and built them a fire, and they had enough for one cup to go around, and Dad took his fires out and lifted the hot coffee can off the stove <laughs> and got it just about ready to pour and spilt the whole thing on the floor, on the ground. <laughs> So all of them were really sad because they didn't get that. They didn't get that. They didn't get that brew. <laughs> well, so the day Dad died, he knew there was a gold mine. Oh, he Uncle knew Ruben there did was too. Always. Yeah. And they, one time they took, uh, went up looking. They had put this uh, tobacco can. I hid it somewhere up there, and 25 or 30 years later, they went up and found it again. And uh, what they had written in it was still in it. The year and the date. They said what they'd done is state the claim. Well, when that was, it was 1950, we were down there, Grandma Catherine, Grandpa and Grandma Catherine, that's when I found it. So that well, was in 50, was it? Yeah. I, I think probably Earl is the most dedicated husband, you know. He could have just threw his hands in the air and left. He probably wishes now he has. But Sarah Elaine had gone with us to Montana. I was, we were engaged to be married, and uh, they went with us to, for him to take me home. And we got there about 1 o'clock in the morning and uh, went into the bedroom. And I said, Dad, this is her one. And he said, well, what the hell do you want me to do about it? <laughs> and and their own kids around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you even learn to like you and respect <laughs> Well, the folks are so glad to get me married off that I think they'd have been glad no matter who it was. Mostly it was just glad to get you out of town. Probably. <laughs> well, she was only engaged three times. That's how come it took so long. When I when I t told told Dad, <laughs> when I told Dad I was getting married, why well, he said. Well, what the hell am I going to do for a hay hand? <laughs> well, I think the grandkids, we ought to have what they think about Dad, because I know Marcia and Terry and Ellen always enjoyed going on trips with them. That was more, and then when Marcia moved out to Seattle, they moved her out to Seattle to stay out there. And when they were ready to go home, she cried on her shoulder, and it was they said, no, you got to stay, and so she did for a while, but they were always glad to take kids anywhere they wanted to go. And we took Ellen up to, to the ranch in Wyoming to work, and, and we left her there without not even a, a clean shirt or anything, and so Dad and Mom said, well, we'll take her up and take, take some clothes up to her on Sunday, and so they took it up, and, and when they got up there, Dad Ellen cried and cried and cried to come home, and Dad said, nope, you have to stay, because if you don't stay, you'll never be able to stay again. So you stay, and it'll all work out. And it did. She got some other friends to come. But that was one sad day, and I think Dad cried as hard as she did, because he had to leave her. Did anybody tell about the time that Marcy was left? Oh, no. That was a special time. I remember yeah. that. Uh, Beth had brought Marcy up here to have her blessed, and, and Dad had just barely gotten back active in the church pretty much, and and he was pretty proud of the fact that he had stopped smoking and, and had tried to get started back to church, and so he got up there, and most all of us were there. I think our whole family was probably mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. and he got up and started to bear his testimony, and he just broke down. He couldn't say another word. Well, I think the whole audience cried, too. And, uh, but anyway, towards the end of the meeting, he says, he got up again, and he says, I'm going to give her another shot. And so that time he was able to bear his testimony. Three times. Yeah, 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 three yeah. times before I finally remember. But that was a, a real special time in Dad's life because 
when when he quit smoking, he just wanted to brag about it that that yeah. he had quit because he wanted to so many years. Well, that's what I remember about too is when he had his heart attack in 1950. Lisa had just been born, and he had the heart attack, and and mother was just so proud of the fact that dad had he had to stay in bed. He was in about it two weeks I think up to the hospital, and she said, "Boy, I'm so." proud of Clay, he had smoked for two weeks, you know. Dad says, well, I never did smoke in bed, Ma, <laughs> but that was the last time. And I never, ever was ever ashamed of my dad smoking. I mean, I, you know, everybody loved him. I but he never, ever, did he ever smoke in the house? No, or no. Or when we were never. traveling in the car? He never smoked in the car. I remember how sad I was, though, so after that he quit and they'd gone to the temple. I can remember that as if it were yesterday. We lived in the White House, and I knew that he was smoking. And I snuck in the closet and reached my hand in his overall jacket that he wore, and there was some bull burn in there. And, oh, I just cried. I was so sad to think he had gone back smoking again. And so I asked him about it. And I don't remember what he said, but I felt like I'd been chastised, and I know it was just simply because he hated the fact that, that he hadn't been able to stay away from him. Because this was when we were still saying. Yeah, oh. and I don't know how much longer after that that it was. Well, I think you went to Schnuck to work in the sugar factory. Oh, I don't remember. <clears> and that was the winter that he started again. He got up there alone. And and working with these other guys. But I don't remember him going up there. I used to remember, you remember him uh, sharing sheets. Yeah. That was so fun to go up there and watch. He, he could just move those shears so easy and those old uh, uh, lambs would run away with all their wool gone. And it was so fun to just watch him do that. Well, a lot of people really thought a lot of Dad because when we were over in Wyoming just a couple of three weeks ago, I was at a party and this lady came in and I said I was from Rigby and she said, oh, why did you know Clay Reston in Rigby? And I said, well, he was my dad. And she went on and on, Shirley and Frankie, Frankie. Nina. And she just had nothing but good to say about dad and mother and how that they were so lonely when they moved into Rigby and that dad was their best friend. And I know he went over there and visited with them. Well, Erwin was just given um, assignments to home seat, and they told him that this man in the ward was, he, he was a widow man, widower, and uh, he, he, they said, you probably won't be able to get in to his house. But he remembered Erwin from the plant, and because he thought so much of death, he invited him in, and he said he, he didn't care for the lessons, but welcomed him back any time every month of him and have enjoyed it. Well, the first time Fred met Dad, he was out turning water uh, on his place, and, and he, Fred walked up to him and he said, Sir, and Dad said, Don't sir me. I'm not one of your army officers. And he said, Well, I just wanted to know if I could use the water, and, and from then on he was a very good friend of uh, Fred's, and, and one day when Fred's wife was so sick, why, he brought him a big, big roast, and he said, I'm sure you can use this, and that always made Fred feel that he did care. Talking about, speaking about Army, I think that was one thing that was really ate on death. I don't yeah, remember how I used to get yeah. so upset when we'd go to church or uh, have an outing and Mrs. Nielsen would talk about her boys and other people about their boys being in the service and that it just it was just like it was his fault that he didn't have a son to have to send to my feeling on that though is that he uh, he felt bad. He didn't get in yeah. the army in the first place. He was I think that well, was he was just ready to go yeah. when the, when when World, War, was World, War, World War One was on. He was ready to go. <coughs> and get to. Well, the, the thing that I remember a lot about that is at, no matter when there was a, a wedding in Montana, he was the master of ceremony. 
And he, it was so fun to have him the master of ceremonies because he could tell stories that nobody ever could remember. And or even think of. And, he always, <laughs> and, and so that was really a fun, and so he was always the master of ceremonies at, a, at any wedding. And, and I remember when he would come into the slaughterhouse and he would tell all these stories about, well, it didn't matter what, just walk in and tell stories. And, and you had to stop and laugh or cry or whatever kind of story he was telling. Well, Larry was at church not long ago down in San Diego, and after church, this lady came up to him. He had Larry been singing in the choir, and his name was on the program, and she came up, and it was Lorana Porter. And she was on a mission down there. And so she went on and on telling about the folks with how that they were their next door neighbor and, and how good they had always been to them. And, and I guess Brother Porter was their, was their bishop for a time, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. Uh -huh. But Lorana was just nothing but, you know, just how wonderful the folks were. Well, that's another thing about that. Was, um, when, we, when we got married, of course, we didn't get married in the temple the first time and to begin with. And I thought, you know, Dad didn't know that Kay was sort of a hoodlum in a little, little bit. He never said, you can't marry him. You just never went along with it. So the day Mother died, I think she was still saying, we never could believe that you'd ever stay together. <laughs> but anyway, he, he just... Uh, taught everybody so many things, and I can't think about dad without mother, and I thought how much, um, I don't know, everybody always loves to go to their place. In fact, Joyce Rushton just told me the other day that she, she got the uh, want, wanting to have a guest room so bad, and she said, you know where I got that from? It was because when we go to your folks' place, yeah, there was always yeah. had a clean bed, and you were, you were welcome to eat whatever they had. If it was bread and milk, if it was that, or if it was... Mother never ran to the grocery store. And Dad, Dad always told me that I could go ride the rest and check line any place and any time. Oh, okay. when we lived in Montana, I think we lived halfway between Glacier Park and every place in yeah, Montana. No. Because people that weren't... The, you know, I didn't even... before my life Somebody. would stop and stay overnight. And I know after Mother had passed away and we sold the old house, we went by one day and Chelsea said, I wonder if those people would just let us come and have Christmas there again. <laughs> she said, it wouldn't hurt them to just let, them, let us have our Christmas at their house. So I know we're just kind of rambling. It's just hard to, to know. There's just so many things we could talk about. I just... I was thinking about then we got married in July and in August the next year we uh, had gone in the army and when we came home on furlough we went to the temple but I remember our interview with uh, Bishop Kinghorn, Wilmer Kinghorn and he just said, you know, your dad has only one thing that's, that worries him and, and keeps him from the church because he's afraid he's going to offend somebody by his habit, but he said, if I had one person to ask for a contribution for the church, Clay Reston would be the very first one I'd ask. So. Well, Terry said when she wanted to go to the temple, she came home and said, I'm going to ask my grandpa if he'll go to the temple with me. And he did. Oh, Derek Hay, too, said um, she never remembers, I mean, if Dad was ever home, it was always uh, he was sitting in the brown chair, and he was she. No matter how old she was, till the, till the day he died, she'd go sit on his lap and he'd give tell her a poem, or make up some mm -hmm. little song or sing to her. And then the other thing she said was that their TV trays and always have bread and milk and radishes and onions and whatever there is was to eat in the living room watching Ed Sullivan. <laughs> uh, my favorite thing to do was yeah, long after I was married 
and I think that that's one of the things that I miss the very most now is to go and sit on the hassock and talk to that and tell him how I felt and just having him tell me everything's okay, everything's going to be all right. Well, the day that, that when you was killed, and he played on drums. He's gone. But then he said, you're good. Well, you guys are going to act out like we're all going to be. Dad always said his kidneys are right now in his eyeballs, and so are mine. And I remember the time that he put their can up. I was all a whole 19, and I had a baby, um, well, what was she, two months old. And they had to drive me to Pocatello and uh, put me on the train, the Portland Girls. I mean, that was just a wonderful experience. But where Dad, were you going? I was back to Chicago. All alone with a baby. And Dad took me on the train and helped me on with my things. And then he said, you know, we... I gave him a love goodbye, and I don't know which one of us followed the most. I mean, he he always was teary, and I have inherited that. I, I'll cry with you, or for you, or whatever you like. I'm just a mess that way. But he just, he just, uh, he loved people, and I think his emotions showed that. that. Can I tell well, one more thing about Neil Bears? about what he said when they had the start in Ocean. Uh, you know, I go to see, uh, see Neil Baird at the college once in a while. He, he always tells me the story about it every time because he kind of forgets what he did. He said, you know what I remember about your dad? It was, he said, I'd gone out there to the store. He'd never seen me before ever. And he said, uh, where are you guys going? And I said, well, we're going hunting. And he said to Neil, well, where's your rifle? He says, well, I don't have it. I'm just going to walk. He says, well, that's no fun. You know, so he went in the very in the back, got his rifle, and he had three or four shells. And he gave them to, to Neil and said, now, go use them and just bring it back when you get through. And he said, he tells me that because he's kind of had a little problem of remembering, kind of like me, but he... Uh, tells me that every time I see. Well, I think Dad was one of the only people I ever knew that could tell somebody off and they didn't even know it. <laughs> he just had a way of, of you know, saying things that, that made him feel better and, and yet they didn't know that they were, I saw that over the planet, I guess, in him. Yeah. One thing I remember too, Kate said, but he, I asked him a few things, and he said, oh, I could write a million things. But one thing he was thinking about was when he went to picking, fishing up the moving trip. And he said, they fished all day, you know, and probably didn't do very good. And anyway, the game warden came by, and he just said, well, how did you guys do today? And he said, that good. Well, mister, we did just as damn good as we could. <laughs> well, did you kids hear about that piece that went all over the United States when he went fishing with the, and he had three flat tires, and when he went back to the cart, the, the fish, fish were gone, gone. Uh -huh. and, and that went all over the United States about him and his fishing story. Well, that was a story, too, oh, he didn't even catch a fish. <laughs> he didn't have a fish for anybody. I don't think he hardly ever caught one, probably. <laughs> But anyway, it, 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 it happened that he was telling a story to somebody and the news <laughs> and he added that person <laughs> heard it and <laughs> got it in the paper. And it was by probably only one flat tire. And I remember <laughs> Maudine calling up and saying, you know, the place on the national news. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I bet a dollar there was only one flat tire. <laughs> probably. <laughs> and it probably didn't be there, but it was only maybe one fish. Or I don't think there was a fish. I'm positive there. I think the kids were with him and the boys, the grandkids. I don't think there was a single fish. 
kind of like that old Model T Ford story that, <laughs> or truck model, anyway, the old truck story that Fred Oh, yeah, about. it gets a little better all the time. Yeah, just every time it gets a little better. Just tell it ever again. Yeah, it gets a little oh, better. Oh, I know, oh. when they're on, he said, I never, he said, I, I never had such a slow rise in my whole life. It never took so long to go anywhere as, as uh, until Dad bought that new pickup for the plant. He never had anything but a bomb. I know it. I he, he looked around. He had to have went shopping to find the worst, <laughs> absolutely worst pickup that he could find. After he got that new pickup, he still had that old one. It was just about the time Travis was, was born, and so Cheryl took our outfit down to Sugar Factory to work, and so Marcia and I would cruise around <laughs> <laughs> that old, old truck, ball. and here she was, just about as big as she could be, and we'd be driving down, oh. what we'd do is drive down to Sugar Factory and trade cars with Cyril and let him bring the bomb home while we had the car, but we got to... Well, I, I don't carry... Have yeah, we've we got her, her, but I, we can just let it go. Can you see all this from where it is? Back up. Just put it on Dawn, she tells the best no, story. No, I don't. Anyway. I mean, oh, sure, I do. I'm kind of like, yeah, I kind of make them up. Well, I'm good. Well, well you, you can't go live on the other end. You can't go. <coughs> oh, I'm hey, it's on, guys. We're recording. Well, shut it off. I've got to go. Let's tell, um, oh, I want to tell all of the, the carpenters in the family, what they can do with their leftover sandpaper. <laughs> they turn it in and have it recycled and sell it to Aunt France with some sandpaper. <laughs> well, is that going? Yes? Oh, okay. Well, that's all right. <laughs> well, it just had to match the, the <laughs> wool paper that we used to have now to a molar. It's, it's, it's just, hey, that was slick. <laughs> So this oh. stuff is white. <laughs> well, now, you want to I'm going to keep the original of this. Well, <laughs> I, you know, can't, I think about running that. I can't think about what I've written without the other. And especially I've learned that past, you know, since the last of dad died and mother was there. She never complained, ever. She didn't mm -hmm. do... And this is just a Mary right there, isn't it? Oh, and we're being, like a lot of Elaine, we're being recorded. Anyway, where I was, I, I can't remember what I was telling. I like you were telling something about mother and dad. Oh, mother. I, yeah, I don't remember any. You know, I think about them together because, you know, just the fact that dad was always the provider <coughs> and always the entertainment and mother was in the background quietly always, and always never was a, never once the floor ever and I think I have the floor all the time and I don't ever have anything ready I, I don't know what I inherited but except to try no one I'm real good at that another thing there are hey, I mean what Taylor from our family period this mother and dad and our family was loved uh he had good parents and they loved him yeah. but he said he never heard the word love ever ever said in their home and dad never hung up the phone without saying i sure love you well you know that's that's what it is with her own he's he said time i mean he doesn't mean to be disrespectful of his own dad but he said he learned so many things from that and as far as being having brothers he, he was always been closer to Ned and Fred than he has any of his brothers well and, I don't know huh? uh, well he was awful close to them but then I uncle Jim and uncle Harold they were I mean my Earl, oh, I see. Earl oh, oh. was closer he, he felt closer to I mean they were they were more friends to him and then his own brothers when we had our had that sale the liquidation sale he said just i think it was the night before we had it he said oh i wish fred fred was here 
And I said, well, you know, Bill, all you have to do is make a phone call. And he called, and uh, five minutes to 11, here comes Fred and Cleon. And he really helped us a lot. Yeah. He stood in the background and got things started. You know, he, he did first, and uh, he really helped get that going. Well, I remember that uh, all one thing that, you know, when we came home from Chicago, and now we're really mixed up, but he got cancer at Salt Lake, and I went back there in December, and we moved to Salt Lake in August, or in April. And on the way home, or back, we stopped home, and we could tell Mother and Dad were on the, our way. It was a Sunday night, Mother got us back from the meeting, and we, we were really going to surprise him. And we walked in, and it shocked him so bad he started to cry. And I thought, I'll never do that to anybody ever again. Because mm -hmm. I felt so bad, you know. Here, he thought we were in Chicago, and we walked in the back door. Yeah. Well, you remember when we went to Mary Hansen's funeral? And yeah. then another walk in, we all oh, yeah, loved we all like a bunch of well, I had been somewhere, and and when I came home, they we decided to go, and I wrote up the thing. Well, they've been back to my house, I think. Yeah, they have. Well, he came and kind of up with that, you know, the same way. Yeah. yeah we I didn't did. really expect them because they would have been, they were in the south down the no, yeah, they were back east. Yeah, that was But anyway, we didn't expect them to come, and they came. One thing I was going to bring off the letters. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, just a little bit. Tell them about it. Yeah. Uh, they were so good. Dad loved it. He just thought the world was can Yeah, My gosh, they were so good to him when he, he was back, back there. And I can't, since I've been in the hospital a few times, I thought, how how did he do that by himself? I you know I just can't even imagine how hard that would be. I remember the letter he wrote home to their care Lisa one of them and said that he broke a lot of bronze in his life. That he found one. No, I said that point to oh, on his birthday. Oh, all right, we've got one similar. We found one now that I can't pray. But do you remember when? Uh, he, he'd say, how are you doing today, Dad, or play it. Kate said, play it, Dad, as always say. Well, I hurt like hell, so I know I'm still, you know, around. Yeah. Or I'm enjoying poor health, or, you know, things like that. And then I remember when he came home from Nails, he knew that he had had cancer, and how uh, he super dead exercise. He said, now we're dead for health sake. Put your tape measure back in your in your pocket. I'm not ready yet. <laughs> <laughs> See, and then he, he or he'd say, be patient for death. Yeah, yeah, be patient. Yeah. But he um he was he made me forget. I thought I was going to be You would let me get in when I wanted to. I can't be in the water. Because you've got to have the, either you or I have to have the floor all the time. I know. Yeah, but your story is through that. Oh, yeah. Carry on. Oh. I can't remember. I haven't. I'm like Marsha. She said that she didn't have a childhood because she can't remember one thing about it. <laughs> and she said, Larry remembers before he was born, <laughs> and she can't remember a thing about her childhood. Well, I think that's the way Beth Ann is. She, 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 she knows that she remembers it all, the whole bit. Yeah, she remembers yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I heard on TV the other day that if you have asthma, that it does hurt. Have what? Asthma. That it, it does block off your memory. And well, so I'm just glad we're recording. <laughs> well, it's a good piece it of information to have. Really well, is. because see, this, how come, this is why uh, well, you don't have asthma. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about Marsha's childhood. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't really there either. <laughs> but I'm not either now, so uh, oh, I can't remember what to say. 
I remember how proud Mother and Dad were of Beth oh, when she graduated from Utah State. And she should have been somebody yeah, else. Well, it took her, well, well, it took her five <laughs> years, but other than that, and oh, I right. remember Mother and Dad and Marcia and Ellen and I were <clears throat> Uh, they took us all, and I remember that we came back, back past Bear Lake. And but I just remember how proud when they marked or walked in, you know, did this procession down the street, and how proud they were. Uh, Costing quite a bit to get her educated <laughs> because she kind of has a checkbook at all times. Oh, my Whoa, you love her. <laughs> you know, I know what she did. Yeah, because when Dad's mom would go, you know, for those fifteen months, she was spending like twice as much as Dad was paying us. Yeah, I think mom. we better block all that. Yeah, we out. better get off that out. But I wish that we could get that. Cause she's, you know, she's got some really good. Money I know. Yeah, you can remember it from too. It maybe make her tell some while you're down there. We ought to get that picture though. Well, the little chubby cheek. Oh, yeah. And they <laughs> put <laughs> 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 oh, She's still gone. <laughs> but anyway, I just, uh, one thing, too, I remember, I mean, I don't know how many trips, but I know that almost, I don't think we ever took a trip to California that Dad didn't <coughs> Dad or did pay a $50 bill on each day. Six to Sunday, your floor for it. Just in case, I need a mat, just in case that's a problem. And if you don't need it, you can it. And then you get got back. And we never needed it, and they always gave it back. But it was really a security, mm -hmm. and that case of that kind of a dark case, you know, at least enough to get them gas or to get a motel or what. And they can do the same thing. And that always well, carries a several hundred in his purse. And the other day, John. John lost his wallet, and he has. He said, "I always carry what Grandpa did in my wallet." And well, he lost it the other day, so maybe he learned. Not I, to always, that. I always, I always worried about found it. I always worried yeah, about that. Yeah, always wanted me. Yeah, yeah, yeah he was smart with that. <coughs> having it in a wallet. Um, you know, for all the years that I, I can remember anyway, going down to Grandma's for Thanksgiving. And uh, <clears throat> remember, you guys, every year you wanted to go around by <clears throat> Delta and oh, Southern. Yeah, yeah. No way Dad was about to ever go. He never went until I was 18. It didn't mean a thing to me. He used to say, well, if the Lord, I told, I, I promised the Lord when I left here, if he had forgive me for having moved <laughs> here, I would never go back. And he said, I'm going to keep my promise. Lord. <laughs> and I guess he didn't go yeah, back. He did. Back I was back finally. Yeah, I finally did. But, you know, I can't remember anything. And and he should have taken you guys. I know he did remember. Well, Fran, we did go over, didn't we, one yeah, time? We was we went over. And, oh, I know. I think they all uh, lived by an awful lot of days in those days. I just remember the story they told about uh, when Hallie was born. Dad didn't know how in the world they were going to pay the doctors $35 because they were just had nothing. And uh, he went out and checked all these traps and he sold them and he had enough to pay the doctor. But Mrs. Young, he didn't have enough to pay her, so he named her. So he, they <laughs> named me after her. And I, I lived with her all my life. <laughs> I liked it. I remember one time when we lived on that. Homestead, and Dad's gone after Wood, and it was late in the fall, and it got later and later and later, and finally Mother got me old car, put our kids in there, and we headed up to town to find a youth with a wagon and a uh, team of horses, and he'd gone up there after Wood, and I just remember that snow hitting against the windshield as we went, and how nervous we were, but we just kept up with him. But it Where was this at? It was when we lived in, in um, uh, on the homestead. Oh. And um, we don't had remember we had that uh, barrels on those slips and we had all water. Yeah. 
Well, the scare had this big, big rock and chair. All four of us would get along. That was the biggest rock and chair I've ever seen. It must have been because I remember it too. Did you all get it? Do you, do you remember when the summer was flood every year? Oh, oh and I used to do a cross and fly in because oh, Dad would he'd flip out, he'd go off and off the horse and hang on the tail. Swim, hang on the horse's tail and I, I remember watching him and it was just a nightmare. Always. You're talking about horses, do you remember the time when I I had a definitely say. <laughs> you want to take this picture down to the reunion. Look, there's all of it. There's Dad. Bill must be somewhere. Is Wilbur? Bill. Yeah, but I can't I'll, be I'll be gonna have to ask him all this out. Yeah. Because <laughs> she wouldn't and let me tell my story. story. Yeah, Francis has to change his story. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I wasn't listening. <laughs> Well, we'll leave this on because they'll be entertaining for... I'm sure they'll just sit here. <laughs> oh, oh, me too. No. Oh, that was cool. I love them. Well, Cyril got started at Christmas time telling about when he was younger. The kids looked at it and, oh, that's what we're going to I'm not sure this is what we're going to do. Oh, well, I know that when... <clears throat> Laura and I are talking. I mean, I don't care if it's a fifth on. <coughs> we can have it for our own self. Talking yeah. about this yesterday, and I said, you know, when when we used to have the family reunions up to West Piney, the younger brothers, the older brothers, were content to sit in the background. Uh -huh. and, and the younger brothers were at Jan and Julie and Marsha's age, you know, now. Now, yeah. And all, and they, and so it made it just wonderful for, for everybody. For the kids. Our kids just loved them. Oh, yeah, they did. And, and yeah. so when Julie and Marsha went to put, and Larry, they tried to get the other California cousins to be a part of it, but they, they didn't do a whole lot. And so it was just more or less left up to these kids. Well, and I the only purpose they had was to make it like it was. Make it like it was when it was up there. But when Fred and Ned yeah. got there, we're waiting on this time. I don't care. Yeah, I can't stop putting it on. Fred and Ned <laughs> got us to the family reunion. Now they want to tell all about the old times, and, and the kids don't want to hear us. Yeah, and yeah. they're not contented like the older brothers yeah, were to sit back and watch the younger generation. And that's what's going to happen. The younger generation isn't going to carry on. Yeah. That's exactly what we're going to find. So if you don't put that on, you're going to miss a good thing. A good opportunity to tell them what you because think. Because <laughs> I said it. <laughs> so now Francis didn't ever get to finish his story. Francis, I'm not going to say a word. <laughs> she probably forgot oh, what she was going to say. Oh, no, say. And I haven't found Bill. Well, my yet. blood pressure's gone. Um, let her, let her, Francis, tell your story. We're wasting Bill. Oh, it doesn't cost any money. It does. <laughs> well, we. And you, you and I. Were, horses. You and I were out with the hor uh, horses, and Dad said, "Why don't you go take in the and take and hitch and hitch the horses and take and take the bridles uh, the saddle, uh, harnesses yeah. off?" And so the very first thing I did was take the horn the halters, the halter off or the bridles off, and away they went, round and round, round and round. And Dad was up on the haystack, and he had a pocket full of of matches and his fire, the matches caught fire and he burned his pocket. I have that. I, yeah, I don't know that it really did. You think it really did? It did. I see the smoke. How did the matches get on fire? And he got so excited. Uh -huh. oh, that, I, and, and he had this, and he was shoveling hay and. And uh, maybe it was when he slid down off the haystack to help me stop going. They all had to rub together. Uh -huh. I guess that could happen. Well, I remember, the only thing I remember about that is I was scared to death, and I crawled under a 
something that hardly any, nobody could get under under a car. Well, I didn't think it was that high, but I was so scared. Of, I just I was so was scared gone. too. I thought I was going to get beat to death. And we keep talking about him beating. Grant, did you he ever beat him? Did he ever, ever beat you? Really beat you? Yes, he did. He give you a really a beating. And he did. Just on several the, times. Not good about principles. The body. Not good principles. Oh, well, yeah, I only did. remember one. I, I'm sure I had a lot of my It seemed like I was always the it. If anything went wrong, it was my fault and I got to be. Oh, I remember I being little, threatened with a radio yeah, strap a lot, but I don't remember. I don't everything. ever remember having, I don't have any welts on there. Anything. Well, even when I got spanked for telling a lie about Grandpa, <laughs> it wasn't a beating. No, it was no, a spanking. It was a spanking. Yeah. It was a spanking. Really, it was a beating of. Oh, different. Yeah, to yeah. really walk yeah. the daylight with, with, a, with a razor strap or something yeah. like that. Leave marks and stuff like that. Do you remember yeah. the time when when we first got to Montana and and the Chinook wind came in and his dad came running in? Come quick, see what's happening. The water was just running everywhere. It was six feet below the night, that, that night and the next morning. The wind, the snow was just a melting mm -hmm. like. Well, wow. that thing is here, that thing is here, yeah. he said. I love, I love the Northern Lights, and Dad was so excited when we could see them. And now I sell it from once in a while we can sing. We can't for you, once in a while we can't sing. I knew when the, when the Northern Lights were bright, the only time I could see them now. I we, outside the car. Oh, I bet. And do you remember <laughs> about God. Brownie? Oh, Every yeah, time I'm the lightning and thunder oh, and their mother and dad said, it's as clear as the far corner. No, no, now, Brownie was, God, we still had, how old was he? Oh, he was old. He was, uh, Bob, there's, you got yeah. a picture here of Bobby and yeah, Brownie. See, he was still around when I remember. And see, we, that, we were at the Rock House, that picture. Yeah. And then we moved over to the White House, and we still had him when we moved yeah. over to the other place. Yeah. The other place. Yeah. I know. Our barn fell down up there. It was the oh. slaughterhouse barn. Oh, great that she was going to call me on the telephone and tell me that our barn had fallen down. Well, you know, that's another thing. Dad was always the chief butcher for all the neighbors. And uh, then I remember the time when he, he uh, I mean, the whole highway was lined with cars because he, he was going out the ditch, and I don't take him to the sewer. Went out. Or the well, oh, well, yeah. he was using dynamite. Dynamite, I know, but it was everybody was, but they didn't know why, and I don't either. But well, I can't really remember. Out. I was looking, but it was it was for a, a drainage purpose. Yeah, that he was anyway, doing. It was and it yeah. blew stuff to Kingdom Come. Yeah, <coughs> you know, when we went back up there to that 50th class reunion, I swear it was just like that 50 years didn't happen. I look right here. Here's Clyde Gray. He looks, I mean, no, not Clyde. Yeah. Jack Gray. He doesn't look any different now than he did in this picture. And there's Bessie, and she doesn't look any different now than she did then. <laughs> And the places up there, the there you don't. No. Uh, and the places up there don't look a bit better than they did when we well, lived there. Well, we can't put that on. Just there. Well, <laughs> and his house doesn't look any better. And well, he's from this guy. Now look at that. Can't have most of this out. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, they wanted to know what we thought. No, they. Didn't <laughs> well, we can't. You, this has been more than an hour, so I'm sure they. You know, okay, there's plenty well. we can cut out. I can. They only want to see who's going to do it. I'm not sure I know how. So I know. Kay will do it. And he's never done it. Little Lori Terry showed me. Oh, we'll let Terry do it. She probably. Well, I'd have to. I'll just have him try it. Mike Montonio, he was at three in the other his day. His so he, he won't. He looks so much like his dad. I can see his presence. But all that stuff, yeah, that's well, I don't care if you leave me. I've been sitting here rubbing my nose. And I know well, that's the only way. On that. Still, we well, must see what we got now. Well, I want, uh, there was one other thing I was thinking about the other day, though. So, in 59, Kay was working for Pacific Finance, and he had to go to California and make the business. Uh, pick up and so we were so 
oh, good. We told Dad, Mother, we would buy the gas down for them if they'd like to take us down. <laughs> so they took us down, and, and they were on their own to come home. I mean, you know, we didn't think that we needed to give them gas money for all. We just already paid the way down there. Oh, I'm surprised they let you pay it down, so. You know, they, I'm not sure we did. <laughs> they were uh, always, I mean, you know, Dad was always looking for a reason to go on a trip. Yeah, yeah he always was. <clears throat> it took a while I to think get Francis on. Francis inherited that. Huh? Francis was the one that really Now, I just wasn't saying the thing about, about traveling. Well, I know, but you know, you're always able to go on a hurry, and it takes me a long time. Yeah, that was the one you can't even see if there's a face there. Oh, I haven't done it. What are we looking at? Where's Dawn? I know, but I think I looked at that and I thought my ring Oh, yeah, I'll bring it up. Yeah. <coughs> well, I just, I have to just remember about, uh, you know, when we were in Salt Lake and we'd move up, or we'd go up to San Quentin, and there was just not a year old. And so she never did know that or unseen. They both were Grandma, they looked alike, and she, you know, said she both of them is the same. And I think that was, you know, the thing about all the brothers. We'd stop at Uncle, Uncle Harold, and Kay always thought we were, he thought we were stopping there to get get a treat, and we really were. <laughs> and he he'd always, he'd always you give could. us, he'd always give the kids gingerbread <laughs> cookies, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. they just hated them. <laughs> oh, the, they just hurry up and get outside and chuck them in oh, the house. But anyway. The day that, that Dad died, uh, Uncle Gene went into into J.C. Kenny's family. You mean the day of his funeral? The day, of, the day of his funeral, that, uh, Uncle Gene went into to, to J.C. Kenny's family, family. And they, were, they did scare them. They knew that they were having Dad's funeral, but Uncle Gene walked and talked yeah, and yeah, looked yeah. just like Dad, and they could not believe mm -hmm. that, that that wasn't him. Mm -hmm. Well, I think what was really weird about the whole thing, huh? I, I never That's felt like, like it was two families mm -hmm. ever. I mean, I always... You never nailed the mango. No, no. I always felt mm -hmm. like drugs. She's Terry's girl. Oh, you're Terry's girl. And this one's, this little guy, he's uh, Jacob Lamont. He's named after his grandpa. Sure Pretty good looking kid. Ruth. Ruth. Uh oh. <laughs> well, I think I have to get up and move, or it won't work. I got to get sit too long. <laughs> Did you whip him? You did one in the house. You did one at Grandma's. These two boys keep you entertained. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Are you working besides entertaining? What? Do you work besides entertaining? Yeah. Don, he wants to come play with us. Well, you could. Is that the camera you had last night? Uh huh. Looks like a nice one. It works pretty good when I remember to run it right. <laughs> I lots of times just take feet. Not right. I'm good. I, that's my best picture is his feet. Because I, I walk along and don't pay attention where it's aiming and.
And so then all I have is feet. <laughs> so I'm going to walk around and see if I can get some of these. Yeah, that's good. Hold it up higher then. Huh? Hold it up higher then. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't get feet? Yeah. <laughs> How are you, Carol? You take that home they can do that. Oh, <laughs> we just see what what I can do with it. I'm not sure. I never monkey with it enough to know how to run it. <laughs> Ruth, name your kid. This is Kathy, our daughter Kathy, and her daughter Shelby, and the twins. Oh, the little one. Oh. And Robert, and Kelsey is here tonight, and Ben's on a mission. Kelsey will be here. Uh, yeah. You what? I'll lean over. Yeah, so you can get in, too. I better get it a little higher, because I didn't get a head on on uh, Don, and he won't like not having heads. Kay? Kay, you could look at me. How far do you have traveled? Let me just finish this one. Linda? Let me finish it. your name is? Christy. Linda and Christy. I'm trying. There's Ned and Ned. Oh. Oh. Bob, Bob, would you look my way? I'm just talking. I got Margo here. Margo, look at the camera over here. Over this way, Margo. <laughs> and your Uncle Harold's girl? Uh huh. Oh, good. I didn't reckon, didn't know who you were, so that's I'm glad I know. And Donna? It's a video camera. I thought you were taking a picture. I'm like, it's Connie's daughter. You're smaller than food, but you think you can take the picture? I'm really out of it. I have no idea. there's other people. And you're? I'm Hal. And you're Jack's? Jack's grandkid. Uh, okay. He's kind of running the outfit this time. Kind of running. <laughs> running the whole time, not running. Can you do this? Running. Oh, okay. <laughs> Terry and Carol and Legrand. It's easier when I ask questions and then I get. So you can hear us talk? Uh huh. The thing I used to have was a lot bigger than that that I carried around. It's a lot easier. Can you hear me? Can you tell? Yeah. It's like a movie camera. Yeah. And you're yeah. talking too. It's a movie camera. <laughs> Say something. <laughs> this is Kay and. And Aunt Marge, and Aunt Marge is 93 years old. And this is Kay's daughter. And what's her name? Tiffany. Steph Tiffany. Tiffany, isn't mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. So, when I get at home, I'll look and say, Oh, I know who that is. I've asked somebody. <laughs> That's a, a video camera. That's me. Uh-huh. So, I'm just trying to stay out of trouble. Well, that's good deal. <laughs> it's easy. Yeah. Oh, this I'll sell this one to National Geographic. Yeah, that, that's the only one to take. It. You should have had your motorcycle. <laughs> well, I sure thought about it. Okay, why don't we start by having a rousing rendition. You don't need to stand and just look at me. You can talk. Oh. <laughs> well, what kind of camera is that? Yeah, that's a movie. Oh, well, that's a VCR? Right, right. Well, that's the littlest one I've seen. I call oh, it's kind of nice to have. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Well, we want to do this, uh, we're going to do this by, uh, like, secret gestures. 
on a rock chair. So be careful if you scratch your nose or something. All right, so let's not do it that way. If you want to bid on something, make it clear. Yeah. You're going to have to have me. I need one more person. Do I have a volunteer or someone who can help me watch? Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's the money. Uh, sign on that. Sign on what I said. Oh, sorry. Okay, why don't we start first with uh, these incredibly stylish hats for my dad. Tyler. I'm not sure where he found this hat. I thought this would be a good opening <laughs> bid hat. Okay, does anyone want to bid on this wonderful hat? Anyone want to bid? It says and co. It's new. It's new. It's got a leather strap in back, not the uh, plastic tabs that come apart. So if you got a big fat head. This will be a good hat. Good selling point. Now, it's a nice hat. Do I hear $3 for this hat? $3 for this hat. That's great. Do I hear, do I hear 4 Do I hear three fifty? Three fifty. Oh, is she signaling? It looks like it. Do I have three fifty? Three fifty. good hat. Another back. We're here at 350. Oh, my dad's raised his hand. 350. Okay. Oh, there she is. Candy, is that her name? 350 to Candy. Okay, 350 to Candy. Does anyone want to bid four? Four. Four? Got four down here. If you're golfing, this would be a nice golf hat. We have 450. 450? Do I have 450 from anyone? It'll bring you good luck on the golf course. I know because my dad didn't have this hat and he had bad luck. <laughs> Do I have 450 from anyone? Okay. Four dollars to Floyd. Hey, you're gonna be broke by the time we Okay, we'll have another one. I need that right here. Okay. Julie back there. Okay, next thing we've got. We have a very cute teddy bear. You have both those? Are you writing them down, Julie? That's two hats now. Yeah, for each. Stood up. He zipped up his pants when she walked by and caught her uh, petticoat in his zipper. <laughs> Put that off. That sounds like a Is it war? They probably had one for uh, we could rent. They would probably have one we could rent.
It's okay. Come here. Well, tell me about your life in oh, Washington. In five minutes. In five minutes. We live in Tacoma in five minutes. Anyway, we're doing <laughs> fine. Come on, we're, she's got to go get a... Anything get, else you want to know? She yes, how many children you have? We just well get some information on I that. I have seven and he has eight. Okay. And we have uh, 71 grandchildren. And, it's a video uh, camera, dear. 20, you don't have to stand still. And 20 <laughs> what? 20 what? Uh, great grandchildren. Okay. I have 11. I yeah. only have nine 12, grandchildren 13. with uh, two in the oven. Well, how great. <laughs> it's two in the oven today. Carol's got 13. So we so got a few. Yeah. Great. Joe and uh, so, Susan. Susan Rich. And, uh, and then, We're out of here. Perhaps we're leaving. Yeah. You're not going to eat. Huh? Sandy and I are not in charge yeah. anymore. The kids are, are in charge, leaving? and they said we're leaving. Yeah. <laughs> this is the last of the days, huh? But Claudia, it's only half an hour until they see. I know it, but you got to eat you somewhere. Have, you You're right. We do. Up You're right. With your picture, huh? you said you'd come down for family picture. We're going to go do it up front right now. Hello. Let's Hello? Sit down here on the lawn. See you then. Okay. How about you, Cleon? It'd be nice than up front under the awning. <laughs> tell me about... Tell we're leaving. Down. Cheryl and I are leaving right away quickly now. Tell, tell me about your family. About my family? Uh -huh. oh, we have a big family. <laughs> and we have eight children. Thirty grandchildren. <laughs> oh, great. How many great grandchildren? Uh, six. Uh, seven, eight. Probably 12. I can't even spell uh -huh. my name. Huh? I said I can't even spell my name. How many great grandchildren has she got? I have no idea. <laughs> well, we were just having just counting them. Uh, Chad has two. Okay. Three, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Chad has two. Chad has two. I don't have two for Chad. I only have one. Sabrina. Chad's got one, Mom. Chad has two. Chad Chad has two. So who's the second one? Well, it's, it's, I don't know. I don't know. But they're not married to you. Well, but still. still. I know. They weren't married. I'll have to contact Billy on that one. I don't, I don't have that in my thing. Oh, Whipper. She didn't. I'll look to see, but I don't think it was in my thing. Uh, you probably have what? So Ten? You, you've got Chad's two. So that's well, Chad has two. Alan has two. Teresa has. Teresa has three. Count Teresa. Teresa has three. Um, Anita has two. Monica, Monica has, has two. two. Carol has one. one. Uh, There's Robin. Well, Robin, you got here early. I did. She's ready to play. We <laughs> 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 brought her raspberries. <laughs> Robin, <laughs> tell me about your family. Uh, Robin, no. So yeah, Robin has. Uh, I have five kids and a husband. How oh, great! And where are you guy. living? Where are you living? <laughs> that's that's grandbabies. Well, uh, that's West Valley City, Utah. That's right. Yeah. You're not too far from Beth Ann and Marcy, then, are you? Uh, I don't know where do they live. The West Valley City. West check them out. I'll have to check uh, them out. Hundred thousand people in West Valley City. So. Well, look under Summer Hayes. Summer Hayes. For Beth. Remember that? That's a golfing game. And. Uh, Hegemeister for Marcy. Hegemeister. I'll never remember that one, but I'll remember the other one. I'll check them out. Yeah, check them out. They need to know you. <laughs> how long? How long? Uh, Fifty-one great grand, fifty-one grandkids. No, we're we're counting points here. No. Oh, oh, counting. now that doesn't work with this program I've got going. <laughs> well, let's see. How do you get this? this is, you got so, it, uh, where are all of your children at? Now, down by in Las Vegas in that area. Oh, let's see. We have one in Oregon. Oregon. Okay. That town in Oregon. That's one time I had to take that for Portland. In 
give me the double. And we have the two in Fullerton, California. And then we have the two in Salt Lake City. Well, and so, and they're all here. That just is really nice. The Not all the spouses are here. All the kids are here. That's great. It does give you a better view. Ned, how is yours? How's your family? Oh, they're all fine. This is that or this is that? Both. Go ahead. He can answer. He's got, he's got on Ned Jr. Uh, my family's all fine, but none of them are here because they're working. And uh, except for Heidi, and she thought it wouldn't be much fun, so she didn't come. Those teenagers, they have that feeling, they have that don't they? Priority, don't they? they? Yeah, yeah they do. Yeah. We have one son on a mission in, in Okayama, Japan, and uh, the rest of the boys are working. Uh -huh. One married. We have a new grandson. We have our only grandson. What did they name him? His name is Peter Jeffrey Rushton. Great. Um, we're missing a card. That's cute. <laughs> <laughs> we have, oh, Ten, we have I one on a mission. Oh, where is it? Grandson. Uh-huh, where is he? He's in Chicago, Illinois. Oh, uh, Marcia lives in there. In Algonquin. Oh, uh, Marcia lives in Chicago. That's Elaine's girl. Yeah. Tell him to look him up. Uh -huh. It's um, Hammer. Atlanta? Yeah, they've been in... Uh, in uh, Chicago about a year. Huh. Of course, you can't keep up with all the time. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to pass to my partner. I think you guys, you can tell these four are more interested in playing their game than talking to me. <laughs> okay, so we're, we're doing fine. The kids are all well. Mom and me. Mom's still working. I reached my 80th birthday. The 28th of last month. So, and a happy birthday to you. Okay. He's going to help his partner. Thank you, guys. Let's get them into it. You didn't bring your kids. I didn't. Oh, yeah, I That's all right. Well, I, I'm uh, Gary Levitt's oh, wife. Uh, the Grant and Terry Levitt are my mother and father-in-law. Uh -huh. And I have four children. <laughs> Gary is married, but Gary has helped me raise them. Well, your kids are growing up now. You should have more money. Uh, uh, it does help, as long as we keep them married. <laughs> and uh, so... Comes and we're doing wonderful. <laughs> and you live here? are all married now. And Where do you live? We live in Salt Lake. And uh, we have five grandchildren. And just one big happy family. Well, at the last reunion, I think it was your little grandson uh -huh. that uh, my little gra uh, granddaughter yes. called Cowboy. Yeah, he just <laughs> fell in love with her. <laughs> I got the cutest pictures of those yeah. kids. <laughs> They, she every time she had seen, she had she had have to um, uh, see her go love his cow, uh, cowboy. <laughs> yeah, he still loves his cowboy boots. <laughs> I thought it was so fun. She yeah. was so interested. <laughs> so they're not here this year, huh? No. Uh, they didn't come from Arizona, so. Oh, darn it. She, uh, she, her hair is clear to her waist, and you remember how red and curly it was? <laughs> but anyway, I... Oh, that's great. <laughs> thanks for, thanks for talking to me. Do you want to talk to us? <laughs> yes, I want to know something about your family and where you're from and what your name is. Cheryl Club. Come here, Evil. Let's see. This is my husband, Evil, my grandson's oldest daughter, and son in law. And we have four kids. And where do you live? In St. George. Well, thank you for talking with me. Get your family and tell me who you are so it's on here. Yeah, okay. I'm John Rushton. I have uh, four children uh, by four different women. Oh, you are telling a fib? <laughs> That's the ones that we can count. That, that hurts. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where they're at. <laughs> where the, all the four Those women four are. Yeah, the four women or the kids. Oh, you kind of threw them out the window. And what's your name? I'm Jim Rushton, son of Clyde. Son of Clyde. 
Uh huh. Where did you serve? I served in Houston, Texas. Uh huh. And we live in Mesquite, Nevada. Uh, Houston, uh, Houston, Texas. Uh huh. That's where I served. That's uh, when when my great great grandmother lived there. It, that was their homestead. Oh, was really? Houston, Texas. Yep, that's where I served. Uh -huh. Texas Houston East Mission. Now we're just I live in Mesquite and just working for my dad. We have a cabinet shop. Custom cabinets. Uh huh. Thanks. Okay, I'll try to tell the truth. Now. Let me turn turn a little That's bit because okay. I'm getting right in there. Well, that wind into the window. <laughs> yeah. I was telling a tip over here, Lolly. And now I got to tell the truth. <laughs> anyway, okay, I have five kids, just one wife. <laughs> They're all pretty good. Two of them are married. One's in Bellingham, Washington, going to school. One just got married and it's in. I saw their pictures. Those, those are just neat. Yeah. That's fun. Then we got a return missionary that's just been home for about six or seven months. He's home working. And then a high school graduate that's going to, she's going to college in Bellingham. And uh, then we got a 15 year old that's a lot of fun. And those younger ones really are because they. Uh, I, was kid, I was being facetious. He's 15 and, you know, we're. We're, the other ones wore us out, so we don't know how to handle this one. <laughs> but I have the best wife in the world, so that's... And you know, that's the most important thing, isn't it? Of course, yeah. Hey, thanks. And Joe Lynn's husband, Jeff. And how many does that, how many that count? That makes 20 of us here. Oh, that's great. And who lives, who's sitting next to you? This is Susan. Uh-huh. She's Rich's wife. Uh-huh. Second wife. And that's Travis, their oldest boy, and that's Lorena, their girl. Uh-huh. Actually, he's the only boy, too. <laughs> Rich and Curtis and Jim. He's my wife. You already got me. Okay. <laughs> and this is, this is Stephanie. Uh-huh. <laughs> this one's Stephanie right here. That's Stephanie right there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you, do all of you live mostly by in Mesquite? We all live in, in Salt Lake, uh, Mesquite, and St. George. Uh huh. Or, or surrounding areas. That's right. Thank you much. Okay, say hello. This is McKaylee. She's Hi, Colby. Hi. Thank you. Some of our family here are Rush is over there, our son. And this is our grandson, Thaddeus, and our granddaughter, Brenda, our grandson, our granddaughter, Alexis, our daughter, Shannon. Sit down now. Rachel. Rachel. Our daughter Shannon. And you know John. Uh -huh. <laughs> our grandson Hayden and our grandson Mark. Okay. And I'm Wally Lennon. Thank you. And you're from Los Angeles area. No. Oh, okay. No, okay. It has been fun, hasn't it? Okay. Ruth? Yes. Lydia, I mean, no, nope, no, nope. Linda, and, Cindy. and, and, our daughter-in-law, Cindy Schertz, oh, wife. okay, and Aunt May, Grandma May, Grandma May and, and May and I have to, um, kind of keep together, because we're the same age. <laughs> Yeah. Yep. We had lots of fun together when we when we were around each other. It's been good years. They were the first people who came to visit. We stayed the night.
So it's been fun. It's been. It's really has been a good long time since I know my. Yep, that's right. So it's been a good years. <laughs> good years. And all of the families have just stayed together. And well, think of all the times we've stayed at your house, Aunt Frances. Yes, but it's been fun. And at your mother's. Your mother's house was always a grand thing to be at. So, can you remember when you stayed with your mom and dad while I went to the hospital to have a Oh, uh huh. And when I got out, she just stood behind her dad's back in front of the seat. She didn't pay no attention to me. Oh. And I had to take his clear to show because he had to work in a clear. Uh huh. And when we went into the house, she ran right over to the white horse. Box and she was okay. Oh. She came and acknowledged your mother and dad. <laughs> she was back home again. Yeah, she was home. <laughs> she sure got well tended, I'll tell you. <laughs> well, I guess most of everyone's leaving right away. Are you are you going right home or tonight? Tonight. Mama tonight. Yeah, I'm gone. And Dad and Rick say they're coming back to breakfast, but I don't know why. <laughs> it has been a good, lovely it, place. It has been a really nice reunion. <laughs> no, but it's still fun. I gotta go get these kids over here when they're not looking. <laughs> you could look. <laughs> These two are getting married in August. They look like it too. <laughs> we did get away from the Levitts and the Russians when we went to Montana. Just just cleaned them out. We had to come back and get acquainted. Ed, how long did how long did you live with Clay and Jetta? How many years? Well, we didn't oh about two years I believe. We lived there. We moved there in in September of uh, thirty four and moved out in uh, the spring of thirty seven. Were, were all of the kids uh, living at home then? Did no. Did they and Francis and Al, were they all there? Yes. Yes. Yeah, they yes. were all there. Yeah. The only one that wasn't there was John, and he was working in uh, in Utah at the CC camps, but he, he caught up with us, but he never did really live at, at home. He, he always had a job someplace. Dad, $25 come to Dad every month to feed the family. He had only nine kids to feed, and his wife and him, and it fed us. You guys might not believe that, but it done the job. I'll tell you, you could sure get tired of eating potatoes and carrots, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, Clay, Clay had uh, some cows, and we drank all the milk we wanted, and butter, and we done fine. Did, uh, did all of you farm with Clay then? No. Or did, all, did the boys go out and, and find work in town? No. Let me tell you a little about Clay. Clay, uh, he farmed just below us. And I, I spent a lot of time with Clay after these guys all left. Uh, we rode out on the range together amongst our cows and calves. And, and I enjoyed Clay a lot. We, uh, 
One time I was get headed for town and Clay was up there on that old place that he had. I thought, well, I'll stop and visit him a minute. And I got up out of the car and walked over there about a quarter of a mile away. No, I wouldn't walk that long for nobody. But it was a ways. <laughs> but it was a ways. And he, uh, we sit there and visit for a while. He was digging potatoes. And it looked to me like he was all through. And after we got through visiting, he said to the horse, get up, and he started digging. And I said, Clay, you've dug all the potatoes. No, he said, I haven't. I planted five sacks, and I've only got four. So. Let's <laughs> go. Yeah. Tell him about the old car. And that's the truth, too. <laughs> Fred, tell him about the old car. Oh, you, the you car. guys all heard about me and the car. And Clay. Yeah. You know, Clay, I used to ride around with him, and he'd butcher, and I used to help him a little. And we come out of the place below where I live now, called the Salzman Place. And he didn't stop. He had an old pickup that every time we went to town, every time Clay went to town, he'd come down to get me. So when it went by a junk pile, both of us could keep it from going in there to the junk pile. So I used to have to go to town with him for that. But anyway, we come out of there carrying the cow, going up the hill, and we finally, with that old thing, made it up the hill. And I, and a highway patrolman come and stopped him. He walked around the pickup and the trailer. He pointed out about 10 or 11 things that was wrong with it, the brakes, lights, everything. And I picked up a rope in the back of the pickup and started making a hangman's noose. And the highway patrolman said, what are you doing? I said, let's hang him while we got him. <laughs> and Clay. Clay, he started to tell a story. Like, you can't believe. I, I'd like to, I'd, I'd like to tell you some of us that are there. <laughs> anyway, he got to the highway patrol and finally told him, you can go. And about a week later, him and I was crossing the same old highway and never stopped headed for the scale to, to uh, weigh a cow. Here come that highway patrolman again, and Louis and Whistle come and walked up there. My hell, mystery, he said, I couldn't stand here that story again. He told him to go on and go. <laughs> hey, Dad, when you did move there, though, where were you moving from, and how many of you congregated in out here? Well, I, got, I, got a, I got a kick out of that. Clyde, Clyde stayed in Delta. Yeah. So, no, I didn't. I came with him. Then I, oh, that's right. I came and we had the first job we'd ever, and the guy paid us $15 cash for uh, doing his field in corn, uh, shocking his corn. Man, We've never seen so much money we was in paid, our lives. We was paid better than we ever heard of anybody getting paid. And we, and there, all of us was home except Don. Mary had just been born, two, she was two years old when we moved to Montana. And, and you moved from, from, from uh, Delta? Delta. To Montana, and yeah. you stayed with Clay for two years on the way? Three years, yeah, two almost three. three. And then, we, they moved in a boxcar. Fred was in on the move, and I was, Clay, Dudley and me, you didn't. But Dudley and me came with Dad and Mom when they decided, so we stayed in Montana. But Fred was in all the moving. And didn't they, they give us a boxcar, uh -huh. free, to get us to Montana. To carry the cattle? Yeah, Great Northern. Uh -huh. We didn't take any cattle, we took a team, and you took some machinery, didn't you, Fred? Yeah, we took the horses and machinery, and the reason they let us go for nothing, the man that moved us up there, worked for the Great Northern. He wanted to get a lot of people up there to raise bees. Uh -huh. And uh, so they let us move up there and not charge us anything for it. But you talk about Don wasn't there. Don was there. But I can tell you something about Don. Don, I don't know if any of you remember oh, this hair. I shouldn't say anything about hair. But anyway, Don had long black hair and curly and he didn't want anyone to touch it. He'd lay under a car and hold his neck up till it was black and blue before he'd ever put it on the ground. 
Well, anyway, he worked for my wife's dad. He come home one night and he says, you know that woman over there that you're going to marry? He says, if she must have up my hair one more time, she'll never live long enough to marry you. <laughs> and that's, and that's, that's the one I married. <laughs> We went to Glasgow the same way. They furnished a boxcar and Don oh, got on with the boxcar and us guys rode with other people. I rode with Les Humphreys and I don't know, Fred must have drove something up there or down there or whatever Glasgow is. And uh, Clyde, he was gone then. I was in, yeah. I was in Delta. Delta, working for Adams. And uh, Don, we had a cow. Dad bought a cow, and she was fresh, and she was given a lot of milk. And Don had to milk her as soon as in the morning, and he could have made, if the bums would have had a lot of money, he could have made some money, but he had to give the milk away to the bums. They were all coming with a pail for him to milk and give the money to them, give the milk to them. We done pretty good in Glasgow, but mosquitoes was this long. How old was Francis and Elaine when you were there? Oh, they was getting to where they was 14, 15. Francis, how old were you, Francis? In 1934. In 34? Uh -huh. I was 12. Do you remember Francis? In thir uh, Don was born in 35, and uh, and I was 12 years old. And and then two uh, two or three weeks after she was born, my, then Bobby died. Two weeks? Well, for... She yeah. was a born the 25th of October, and he died the 9th the winter, of November. The first winter was there. Uh-huh. The, the first winter we was there. We, we lived in an old rock house. The, the walls was too thick, thick. And in the summertime, at night, they'd get cool, and the house would stay cool all night. But in the wintertime, they'd get cold, and the house would stay cold all night. And <laughs> one morning, my mom got up to make uh, fire in the kitchen, looked at the thermometer, and it was 30 below in the kitchen that morning, in that old rock house. Well, I walked up the stairs one time with a, car a, gas a kerosene lamp in my hand, and, and a great big black bat flew at me. A bat oh, scared yeah, me. Oh, yeah, we had bats everywhere. <laughs> That's in the belfry. Let me, let me tell you about that old rock house. It was empty. And I rented the land, and the house was on it uh, after I got married. And I was raising the sugar beets, and I shouldn't have been because there had no money in it. But anyway, we had a bunch of dark people. They was Negroes, but they said we're from India, and they called them Indians. But they was dark people. And I thought one night there was old, old uh, Oregon upstairs in that building, in that old rock house. I thought, here these guys were down there, and I thought, I'll sneak into that house, I'll go up there and put my feet on that organ, and I'll start playing, and I'll scare them guys to death. I walked, went into the house, walked up the stairs real quiet, got up there to the door where the organ was, and it started to play. And I fell down two or three times getting out of the house. <laughs> and I run out to my car, Tried to start it, it wouldn't start, so I run up over the hill to my house. Went back out to the car the next day. I don't know who was playing that organ, but it wasn't me. <laughs> it had at least 17 rooms, but one part of the house we didn't use. The old part. On the... On the... Upstairs west, on with the that? the west side. Over the, over yeah. the garage, yeah. there was something or a milk house. Uh, Robinson's used it as a milk house. I don't know if this works. Does it work? It does. They turned up a little more. Anyway, it was just before I went in the service in about 1939, 38 and 9, I, I worked for the people that owned that house, stayed with Clay and Jetta, and then I uh, milked cows for them, uh, milk, uh, I don't know what all I did, but I worked for the dairy all the time for a couple of years. It was a great place to be, but I'm glad we're where we are now in Washington. <laughs>
You might want to know why we're in Washington, but we worked in the temple for 11 years. In, well, really 12 years because we worked in the Seattle temple before we was, uh, before the Portland temple was built. And then we built a nice little, had a nice little home right at the edge of the temple ground. And it was a beautiful place to live. We worked there for that long and uh, we were starting to get a little slow and forgetting where we were supposed to be on our next assignment. And so we took the, so they uh, released us from the temple and uh, soon after they did that, we started looking for a place in Tacoma and found a place there to live. When we got it all added up, Carol had 39 of her children there in the area and I have 39 there, and I have two brothers and a sister in their family, so I've certainly enjoyed moving back to the Tacoma area. It was like moving back home. When I come back from the, the Navy, oh, Glenn Dix, our neighbor, Fred and I knew him well, and Clyde knew him well, gave me a contract to grow 100 acres of sugar beets. And we, I, you could get $100 for a year out of the Navy to keep you living. And when I got through raising them 100 acres of sugar beets, it took me two years to pay off my debts. <laughs> I'll tell you something else about Clay and I. We, like I said, we used to ride up on the range together with our cattle together and everything. And we had a rain in a brown corral up there by the canal and we got all of the cows in there and the calves and so we wanted to push the cows out so we could brand and vaccinate and castrate all the calves and, and take care of them and we got all the cows out but one old wild cow and clay was over here around the run on the round krell and he'd push her over there to the gate she'd get over there at the gate like she's going to turn go out the gate and she'd turn around and come at me and I'd crawl up on the side of the crowd. I wouldn't stand there while that cow come at me and we did that four or five times. Clay kept saying, damn it, if you don't stand there, we'll never get her out. And I said, if you want to stand there, you stand there. I'll go in your place. So I went around there, pushed the cow around there like she was going to go out. She turned around and come back to Clay and got her head about a foot from his stomach. And she was shaking up and down, and he stood there, not a movement, not even his eyes. And pretty soon he said, Fred, there's something wrong here. <laughs> and she hit him in the belly and just knocked him around. <laughs> anyway, I think he'd crawl up on the fence after that. <laughs> One day my mother was helping Dad with uh, getting some pigs in the, in the pe uh, truck. And he said, well, stand there in the gate and don't let her that old sow out. So she stood there all right, but that old sow went in between her legs and off she rode her riding on that old pig. That was your mom? Yes, that was my mother. The only thing that happened to me that was good, oh, well, Fred and I was the only two of the, I think we was the only two that was married and sealed in the Carson Temple when we married. And, uh, the only thing coming back from the Navy, I went through Chinook and met my wife, and I got a good wife out of the deal. We're about done. Well, hey, I want to ask me ball in a minute. Uh, I want to ask. Uh, I don't know if Legrand wants to defend, uh, but when did Legrand get to participate with you guys? Well, when, 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 when he was born. When he was when he was a kid in Delta. We all stopped there and visited with him. Helped him milk the cow, and yeah. we got to know him good. It's we knew him. In I, I was pretty mean. You know, one day, Ben would chase me around the house. I had a little red wagon. He would chase me around the house. We'd go up past. He'd go like, oh, you have to handle the dirt. And he'd just come across and crack both of the chips. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just rolled laughing, and he got up. He's been, <laughs> that's not very funny. <laughs> <laughs> He's been hobbling ever since. Uh, <laughs> he was a but were you born in Delta, Legrand? I was he was born, born in Abraham, right? With us. Okay. Hobbush. I was born, born in Hobbush. Uh, yeah. Dudley was born in Hobbush. Laverne. 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 La
Dudley and Laverne and Legrand. Yeah. And so then when did you, when did Don and Lehman, did they finally move back towards the Las Vegas? Uh, we oh, we, had, we went to Vegas about the same time they went to Montana. Yeah, okay, about so the same. Yeah, because they were, he worked, uh, Uncle Lehman worked for the, the seat company in, in town. He was the sheriff in town. And we, anyway, he lived around there all the time we was there. There was no no way you could separate Legrand from us. He was a brother, whether he knew it or not, and we was with him. Did anybody get to go work with Uncle Harold down at the dam? I and, did. And, okay, you did, Ned. Well, I worked at the sugar factory in the the year that the war was declared. Uh -huh. And then I went to down to Las Vegas and met Harold, and Harold uh, helped me get a job at the dam. And I worked the actual spring, probably three or four months. And uh, should I tell the story? George, that I told you about Harold and Pie? Sure. Okay. Harold, uh, well, before we got the pie, Harold told me to go over there to that house right over there, and that's where Uncle Merritt, your brother Merritt, lives. I went over, and I knocked at the door, and a guy came out of that house. I had no idea who the heck he was, and he had no idea who I was either. And I stood there muttering, and he says, tell me, young man, what's your name? And I told him, I'm Ned Rushton. And then he come declaring who he was. About a week later, I went over. Harold was awful good to me. He was good to everybody, and I think Fred stayed at his house some, too. And uh, he, I went over to Emma's, Merritt's wife, and I told Emma, I seen Emma making pies, and oh, they was beautiful. Them days they was raisin pies. Everybody made raisin pies. I don't think they do now. And I told Emma, man, they're pretty, and she didn't offer me a pie. And I went back to Harold, and I told him, Emma's making the be most beautiful pies. And I says, you know, I'd like to go get one for us. And he says, there's no way. And you know the word. <laughs> Did you get one? That was me. I would have said it. <laughs> and uh, I said, well, I'm going to go try. And I went over there, and in about 10 minutes, I brought a pie back, and he couldn't believe it. But Emma was a beautiful lady, but she didn't just give to everybody, but I was her buddy. <laughs> uh, let me, I'll tell you a little about Harold while I lived down there with him. <coughs> And I got, I was working on the dam. At his grandma's house. Come on, 